Alex Jones. 2015, a banner year for beheadings in Saudi Arabia. According to Amnesty International, beheadings have surpassed 175 at a rate of one every two days. Many had hoped that new Saudi King Salman would have diminished the brutality. Instead, he has accelerated it. The Independent reports, the kingdom killed 102 convicted criminals in the first six months of 2015 alone, putting it on course to beat its 1995 record number for the calendar year of 192. Those killed included children under the age of 18 at the time of the offense and disabled people. In fact, the numbers have climbed to such a high level, the Saudis have placed a job posting for eight new executioners. 28% of those that faced the executioner's blade were due to drug offenses, adultery, witchcraft, and of course, sorcery. Many of those executed are not given legal representation and confess to their crimes after breaking under torture. The bodies of the executed are regularly displayed in public squares where the corpse is tied to a bag with the head of the violator inside of it, something the United Nations and Amnesty International have long demanded an end to. 21-year-old Ali Mohammed Bakir al-Nimr faces crucifixion and beheading for attending a demonstration against the Saudi regime when he was just 17 years old. Well then, America and the rest of the representatives of the modern world must be furious with Saudi government for these blatant displays of medieval barbarism. Wrong. Saudi Arabia has been chosen to head an important UN human rights panel, and State Department Deputy Spokesman Mark Toner responded with enthusiasm. Toner said, we would welcome it. We're close allies. Close allies. According to witness testimony to the classified 28 pages of the 9-11 report. Ladies and gentlemen, the Saudi government runs al ISIS, runs al-Qaeda. Does that mean that sometimes these groups don't attack Saudi Arabia to demand more goodies and more power and more weapons? Absolutely. But that's the real problem. There it is in the New York Times. Convicted terrorists claim Saudis funded al-Qaeda and knew a plot to down Air Force One. It's in the 28 pages that Saudi Arabia was running the hijackers and they were in Saudi intelligence. Yeah, but let's go further than that. Under Clinton and Bush, they protected those hijackers when the FBI tried to stop them, when they were training, when people at the flight schools were suspicious. But what about how at least five of the 19 trained at U.S. military bases and were given spy training? The head of the Defense Language School, Colonel Stephen Butler, went public a week after 9-11 in the San Jose Mercury News and said, I don't know what's going on, but we train these guys at our bases. Muhammad Atta was in my class. Something's wrong. Of course. Of course. Do we know exactly what, what happened? No, but we know that this was allowed to happen, bare minimum. There's ABC News, still secret, 28 pages that could change our understanding of 9-11. I've been told by the congressman on this show and military intelligence people on this show that have seen it, what it says. Senator Graham, former senator of Florida, 9-11 commission, has said what's in it. We know what's in it. This ally of ours funded the 9-11 terror attacks and has been dubbed the Great ISIS by Colonel Sharaf Luckman, the official spokesman for the Yemeni Armed Forces, a region that has experienced exponential war crimes undertaken by Saudi Arabia and supported by the United States. In a related report on British arms sales, Robert Perkins wrote, Yemen is the worst country for civilian deaths and injuries from explosive weapon use in the first seven months of 2015. The Saudi government has been very elusive with the evidence connecting them to the bankrolling of ISIS. It has officially condemned the Islamic State, along with al-Nusra, the Muslim Brotherhood, Yemen's Houthi rebels, and Saudi Hezbollah. Wealthy Saudi and Qatari citizens, however, continue to fund and support Sunni Wahhabist groups in the Middle East, including ISIS, al-Nusra, Liwa al-Tahid, Arar al-Sham, Jaish al-Islam, and other jihadi fighters in Syria. And none of these wealthy agitators have been beheaded. The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientist notes, a good portion of the funding for the ISIS and similar terror groups such as the Al-Qaeda affiliated Al-Nusra comes from Sunni elites located in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and the Gulf states, countries that are ostensibly U.S. allies. John Bound for Infowars.com. Who do you prefer?
Barack Obama or George W. Bush? Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, these guys are corporate spokesmen. They're not leaders. I mean, they both started illegal wars. Hell, they both tortured people. They bailed out criminal corporations and they spied on you. They both violated the Constitution and they even committed war crimes. So what's it going to take? I mean, what will it take to finally wake you up? Think about it. If Joseph Stalin ran for president as a Democrat and Adolf Hitler ran as a Republican, one of them would end up leading our country. It's elephants and asses screwing the masses. And your choice between the two parties is a myth. Because in reality, it is a two-party tyranny with one ideology, divide and conquer. So join the revolution and break the false left versus right paradigm. InfoWars com all coming up today and of course we're going to have open phones there is a drudge report headline new world order putin outsmarts obama and i have been scanning over the editorial piece out of the new york post and i agree with part of it but not with some of the other parts and at the bottom of the hour i'm going to go over some of this article claiming that Obama's naive, Obama's from the 1950s, uh, Obama's trying to be friendly to Russia, and Russia is being decisive and knows what it's doing. Russia is on the verge of economic collapse. Russia is under massive economic warfare. Russia is surrounded by jihad al-Qaeda forces funded by the West. Russia is fighting for its life and has continued to put its hand out to the West. But if you look at the photo, it's Obama trying to shake the hand of Putin, and it looks as if Putin is refusing. When it's Russia that's been thrown out of the G8, it's Russia that's been thrown out of the G20, it's Russia uh, that is seeing oil prices brought down to bankrupt them. And by no means is Russia some sweetie cake, perfect pantheon of grace and innocence and law-abiding love. But compared to the Anglo-American, New World Order, technocratic, eugenics-based, transhumanist, world government pushers, Russia is just good old-fashioned, mafia-style government. So at the bottom of the hour, I will break down that report. Of all these stories, just, just look at this one. From BizPack Review, it's up on Infowars.com. School goes into lockdown after student displays Confederate flag on backpack. So now they've gone from somebody's got a gun or a knife to lockdown to, ah! The children screamed in fear. They had seen the symbol of evil. They had seen the symbol of the South, the Confederate battle flag. They didn't know what it meant. They didn't know it was a Scottish Christian symbol. They didn't know that it had nothing to do with slavery. All they knew was the mainstream media had told them it was a sign of great evil. And to add to the hysterical religious experience, the school was locked down for hours and armed police ran through the halls. Children were then suspended. Three of them, one wearing the flag, others that were collaborators in the criminal acts. School goes into lockdown after student displays Confederate flag on backpack. I've never flown the uh, Confederate battle flag of Robert E. Lee. But I'm tempted to because you've got to counter this type of brainwashing. Just like when they try to ban guns or have all these Hollywood movies, have cops pull people over in Texas and say, you got a rifle in your car, you're going to jail, that's illegal. That's in almost every cop show, every drama even though that's not the law, they'll show that to create the perception so your neighbor calls the police on you when they see you putting a deer rifle in your car. And so folks engaging in concealed carry have been protecting society and lowering crime rates, but open carry has been actively promoting the idea that our guns aren't illegal and have been showing the sheeple that and countering the brainwashing. 
And it's just as important of a civil rights, human rights, God-given move as Rosa Parks uh, sitting at the front of the bus or folks trying to eat at lunch counters where they've been told blacks wouldn't be served. It is just as epic, just as seminal, just as important. I personally know the South was manipulated into the war by British intelligence. That's declassified over 100 years ago. The North engaged in great crimes, certainly. The South engaged in some crimes as well. The founder of Texas, Sam Houston, was against it and was removed from office as the governor of Texas. First, he was the president, then he was governor. And they removed him. He had to step down from office because he was against the war. He said, you're being set up. You ought to go read. In fact, I'm going to do a whole piece on this. So I was reading a book about it and reading his quotes. I looked online. They're online as well. Just Sam Houston's comments, Sam Houston's quotes on the Civil War. He said, the North's got 10 times the industrial might. They've got three times the population. We're being completely set up. Believe me, I ran the operations to come into Texas with the North and take it over in an intelligence operation with Andrew Jackson 30 years ago. You don't want to do this. They've got a giant intelligence network. They control the ocean. They've got a huge Navy. We're going to lose. We're being set up. They said, ah, be quiet. You're out of there, you Yankee. Of course, he wasn't a, quote, Yankee. He was from Tennessee and famous fighter and he was proven correct and there was a lot of my family uh, that was against the civil war in texas some of them were neutral and went further west others joined the confederacy i've got ancestors that were confederate colonels and generals and i'm not going to get into it but the point is that they were like robert e lee they were against it as well but once the war started following the constitution they had to join their state but it was not some glorious war. It was a disaster. So I don't particularly like the Confederate battle flag because it makes me think of the South being manipulated by British intelligence in an attempt to break the country in two. But it is a flag that even in the annals of the British, the French, and others is seen as one of the most powerful symbols of underdogs because many times the South fought 10 to 1, 5 to 1, 3 to 1. And would run out of bullets. And would still win with swords and knives. So the South was amazing. And because everybody that had gone South and gone West were the wagon train folks. And they'd been fighting their whole lives. And they'd been hunting to eat their whole lives. And... Um, it was also in the Napoleonic era had kind of ended, but it persisted in Texas and a few other areas where people still had duels in the streets and people still were into dying in war. That was the, uh, the greatest thing you could do. It was almost Viking. Well, it wasn't almost Viking. You had the Franks and then you had uh, William the Conqueror and you had that whole culture in Europe that basically was Viking. Uh, the Norse culture is what made Europe what it is today and was the metal that made Europe rise to be the dominant force it is militarily. That culture of berserking, of fighting to the death, of dying with a sword in your hand, of wanting to die in battle, of enjoying it, of, 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 of going past fear and being completely wild-eyed crazed and taking hallucinogens as well. That was uh, basically the, 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 the Norse culture. If you're a new listener and don't believe me, just look it up. Look up Vikings and mushrooms and you'll, you'll get the rest of the story. But I digress. It, it's just the hysteria. Imagine if someone saw a swastika and they locked the school down. What if you're walking in for your world history class in, say, the 10th grade? and you've got poster board, and it's got the Allied symbols and the Nazi symbols, do they lock the school down for that? I've actually had people, when I was a teenager, come over to my parents' house and see big bookshelves everywhere, and then books on the shelf that had swastikas on them, 
like Rise and Fall of the Third Reich that won a Pulitzer Prize, and people would say, why do you have this? So like, this one knows how to read. He's got to get watched. Just, ah, oh, no, I saw it. A Confederate battle flag. Oh, no, it's so evil. It's so bad. School goes into lockdown after student displays Confederate flag on backpack. The purge of culture, thanks to political correctness, BizPack review article. A student display the Confederate battle flag.